Well, this is our job this week. We're out here in Mandarin. We are taking out, I think, just about everything, except for the large fixtures, palm trees. Um, not taking out any concrete. That's good. But yeah, taking out almost the whole landscape and, and remodeling, uh, sort of reimagining how this looks. Um, we're sort of adjusting to the natural setting of things here. There's gonna be a large pine straw area. There's sort of a phase one and phase two to sort of bridge that natural area to the landscape as well. Um, it's a lot of cleanup. I mean, as you can see, a lot of leaf litter, a lot of sort of dead space, a lot of uh, natural plants that aren't really making it, just sort of looking scrubby. So we'll tighten it up, clean it up, and then install beautiful landscape to boot. This property on this side is theirs. Oh, wow. And <laughs> uh, long story short, we initially were going to do something here because they cleared this out. They found in clearing this out, they found they were just having a lot of problems with snakes and strange critters in their yard. Uh -huh. And so they cleared it uh, with the help of an arborist of what trees were viable, what, what wasn't viable. <clears throat> and this is kind of what remains. This part and their this yard won like Mandarin uh, landscape of the year. Oh, wow. Because the, as you'll find, like, well, you're not, we're not working out here. But plants. There was irrigation through here. This was all landscaped. I could see Lariope cast iron. Yes, there. this was all landscaped at one point. <laughs> so the only thing we're doing on this side, though, just so you know, is cleaning up along the fence here. Okay. And planting, I think it's the just Simpsons. some Simpson stoppers. Um, and we were going to do, I think we made them a little bigger. These are wild flowers. They're so pretty. I just wish they were flowering. Yeah, I mean. There'll be so many good looking wildflowers out here. They oh, want to put go. phase two, they want to put a walkway, like a gravel path so that they can walk their dogs like and stuff. Like a park? Through. Yeah. And a bench. There's another and... potential customer who wanted to do that down here on the river. Oh, yeah. Somewhere. They had a brand new beautiful house built right on the river and next to it they bought the lot next to it and they're like parking their boats there and it looks like a little community park like they're having to keep people out of it but that's what they want to do is yeah. like you want a little park and that's, that's what they great. want is they want to be able to great. access through the gate and walk the dogs and maybe put a that's bench awesome. out there going up the fence <laughs> but this was at one this had a big arbor at Ooh. one point and just be careful yeah they're spiky and then, like I was mentioning, there's a lot. So there is septic field everywhere. But all of that is going. Everything on the side there. Gotcha. This is all, so he did spray this, which was nice. This is all going to be pine straw. That's what the difference is. It's going to get mm -hmm. weird here, as you can see, because we got mulch going around the tree. But it's not, you know, it's not going to be very defined. That's what I'm afraid of. Like the... The difference between the mulch and the pine straw. Oh. I know. Um, at the nursery, we did this. Uh, mm -hmm. Just I just did this on Friday, mm -hmm. where we put pine straw against mulch, and it looked okay. The texture difference is significant, especially if the pine bark mulch is thick enough. Okay. I made it a little thicker, so it, so it would stand up like the pine straw did. Nice. Um, that it, would it be looked, great. It did look good. That would be great. So it's mainly like the three trees just kind of getting them mulched in, and then the rest is gonna be pine straw. And then outside of the fence, that tree over there is gonna get pine straw too. Okay. So we're cleaning it all the way to, they had this pool put in this year. They, they finished it at the beginning of the year. And so that's why that's all a mess over there. So they really just kind of want it level. Air is under this, but then still how little light gets through, even though the canopy's way up there. I know, and see, they even if they had the trees thinned out, they did have an arborist, a lot of tree work done. Ah. It's still very open, so it does get some sun. It just doesn't get a lot. A couple hours, yeah. <laughs> straight sun. So and so, just be really creatively cool with making it like a definitive difference. Sure. You know, like curvy line. It's all going to be a row of viburnum. And then that back corner is going to get this little duty dad of landscaping over there. Okay. Um, just to add a little, they just want a little color. Yeah, great. There's a little gap over there visually anyway. Yeah, just to just kind of pull it all space. together, you know. This is all going to get cleaned up. Is that a Brody on the corner on the yeah. drawing? 
Yeah. Awesome. Some Brody here, Brody there. There's a few in the front too. Awesome. I would leave that. I think those are cool. There's a little Chinese fan palm growing there. Yeah, it's kind of random. Yeah. I like it. But um, yeah, so that's just going to be viburnums. And then, oh, these are fun. They want this side to look just kind of like English, the English countryside, where it's just clean, leveled, and grass, just so that they have a an area to play. They got young teenager. And then, what I wanted to show you though is you'll find interspersed some tree trunks in the ground. Like there's one. I don't know what those half circle things are. Um, there's one. Mm -hmm. I just left this open because I wasn't really sure what we were going to do around it. I kind of was hoping we might just have to just take mulch around, like kind of do a, the same thing, kind of do a cool okay. line. Just incorporate the tree. Mm -hmm. They've got mosquito lines. They were supposed to flag them. I it do see that. Does, yes. Oh yeah, they did. They got white. See the white flags? Gotcha. That's a mosquito nicks. Yep. Is yep. that like those cast irons come out and stuff? No, we're just gonna, they weren't sure what they want to do with that area yet. <clears throat> it used to be a patio and they don't really know what they want to do with it. They did put, just put that fence up though, that's new. Oh. That wood fence, that's yeah, really that's pretty. pretty. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, the only thing that's really going over there is going to be the, you know, the azaleas. Uh -huh. And then just a few little lantana lavenders, ground cover, kind oh, of okay. over here. Cool. That's about it. They love these trees. Those olivey looking oaks? Yeah. That's great. They got That's why I said stuff. this used to be like this really magnificently landscaped, but when they bought it, it they had to take down trees that were dying and dead. And we're not doing anything over here because really? they're going to redo the driveway. It's going to be their next phase. Okay. And then here, same thing. We're just going to clean this out, get rid of this stuff. Okay. Um, we're doing just a little bit of landscaping up front here because, again, they're going to redo the walkway. And um, I, re I, did, I designed a whole new front for them, but they decided to not spend the money on it right now because they want to do, they want to rip the whole driveway out. Right. But we're just putting a juniper here, a few plants around it, cleaning this out. I think, yeah, those are just yeah, solar. Take that down, take the mulch out. Even the drainage, we're not doing any drainage. They, they don't. Like I said, this is all going to go. Yeah. But see, the front is kind of just funky. Yeah, there's nothing going and on in there, that's all. This used to be, these are going. This could be so pretty. Okay. Yeah, I know. Isn't it gorgeous? Yeah, this this could be amazing. Okay. Yeah. So we had actually just re-ripped, you know, changed that. And they, they're just not sure how they want to, if they even want to keep these walls. Because they uh -huh. were at one time covered in vines. So when they painted the house, the people that they bought it from painted the house, this was covered in vines, so this didn't get painted. So these are these are going. All of the stuff in here is going, okay. and it's just going to be a few um, really, more even this Big old thing. Yep, that's going too. Where are you? It looks like it was a, like an andina or something. What are these plants out here? Oh, it's <laughs> awful. It's cool. But along the house is rock. We're putting rock up there. Oh, there was rock somewhere else too. Oh, Here's back rock. here. Yeah, in, in there. The pool equipment area. And we can even ask them if they still want to do that okay. now that they put that fence up. They might not. Um, but this is definitely going to have a rock bed, and then the rest is just going to be mulch. Okay. You know? And then this stuff, I don't know what to tell you. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll give them a proper edge again so they don't need it, basically. Yeah. And then um, this guy's going. <laughs> this guy's going. Both the segues. The third one over there? That one, you, I don't know. Day two of tear out. Still tearing out. <laughs> it's all good. It's a long uh, three day tear out here. Um, so we're a little less than, maybe a little over halfway through. We still have like the minor cleanup and whatnot to do after we do the heavy tear out, sort of the rough, rough in tear out. Um, yeah, it's just a lot of grinding at first, you know, before we start making it pretty, we're kind of just making a mess, trusting that we can clean it up afterwards. This is the tough work, I think. Planting is tough, but this is almost always tougher. I'm 
there's also an old chain link fence in here, but there's everything else. There is jasmine, there are stumps. There are root vines that are endlessly long and woven together. So this, this bed has proven to be very difficult. We've, uh, we've let this be for a second while we get some momentum elsewhere, and then we're gonna come back and try to destroy this thing, because it, it's awful. This is sort of what happens when natural Florida mixes in with an older landscape. Um, you know, built in with the sort of exceptions we make over time or things we let go, and then it's it's unmanageable after a while. This is a tough day out. Every one of these stumps tried to come back. Uh, somebody cut it all the way down, but the tree's a little bit more determined than we are sometimes. Um, just comes right back. Big stump in there. Same over there, they had cut down a magnolia and it came all the way back. And this was a maple tree and it was coming back as well. You have to take the whole stump out and that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so when you have items in your landscape turned over and you turn them back over, there's usually stuff living in it. Usually bugs. There was a big old snake in it today. I'm sad you guys didn't get to see it. But big snake in that old pot. It was hard to pick up, so probably should have been more wary of what was in it, but big snake. <laughs> Foreman David Arthur updates us in week two of this large landscape project designed by Pam Poe. Today's the first day we're putting things back together, starting with this lighting wire. Um, we're getting plants in as irrigation rotates around. They're finishing up and we're just following behind them, putting in all our plants. Keeping the schedule tight, you know, trying to get out of here in a short amount of calendar days. We did get some extra work. We found a pond in the front yard. Uh, it was interesting. Filled with all sorts of construction debris and rocks and flagstone like you'd expect. Root mass. Um, lots of fun stuff. It was pretty easy to take out. It wasn't the worst, but it was very surprising, shocking. Um, other than that, it's been pretty smooth. Just a big job. It's just a big job. It just takes a while. That's all. Yeah, big project coming together. Lots of details like having to put their mosquito fence back up or a mosquito barrier, just small stuff like that. Um, today's not the last day, it's the second to last day, but we are wrapping up quick, as always happens. It's a big mess for a long time, and then in the last few days, it just kind of slaps together really quick. Um, doing some grading right now, first thing in the morning. Um, trying to get all our sod off the pallets today. And irrigation's finally out of the way. They had a huge install. Uh, probably close to or more than the cost of the landscape itself. Uh, when you have to do a full irrigation reno, it's, it's extensive. It can be as much as your landscape. Um, but that's, you know, that's the insurance, that's the protection, that's, uh, that's how we keep the landscape alive. So it's, it's absolutely necessary. Yeah, so as far as grades go, um, most grades are pretty awful. Uh, we step back in here, we take the sod out, which we cut out fairly evenly, and underneath is always this really ugly grade. Um, so. Typically you can go through, add some fill dirt, pull it back with the machine and have a pretty well set grade quickly. But uh, over here, like on this septic field, the grading is 100% hand grade. We go through and rake down the high spots into the low spots, um, clear the debris and try to keep the landscape flowing water. So it doesn't catch water anywhere, kill the grass, especially in shady areas, like in the corners of this yard, uh, that pooled water is just gonna hurt the grass, hurt the grade. Um, slowly sink the ground down, everything that you, you know water to do. We just don't want it. We, we want it to flow across the top of the grass and feed it, but not sit anywhere. Um, so a nice, clean, compact, and consistent grade helps move that water out. Um, you know, bar any extreme examples, like for, 
or this this corner over here by the driveway, you actually can't get this water out of the backyard, so it is going to catch over there. Um, but we just minimize that as much as possible, you know, bar using a drainage system to pop it out to the street somewhere or something like that. One of the first of the last touches is sod going in. So our sod's in over here. Um, it's looking pretty finished on this side. We'll be putting pine straw and mulch later today. So this is our wrap up process. Um, we're going through putting sod in, putting mulch in and getting everything watered one more time, making sure everything is solid before we leave. Um, I had to wrap up things like the mosquito fence, some broken lighting wire, um, irrigation's even wrapping up some details out here for me right now. We'll be using up all the rest of the sod, expanding our bed areas where we can, where it's not planned. You know, we'll kind of talk that through and add sod in places. We do have a little extra work to do as far as prep, because sometimes things show up in the course of the project and we have to add that onto the end. Um, sometimes it's extra, sometimes it's necessary. We sort of discuss that through. It depends on the context but this time it's pretty necessary. It's gonna make our mulch look bad if we don't take our rocks out from under it up front. So if you do have vines on your trees, I know it's kind of a nightmare. Um, you can see what looks like fairly clean dirt down here. There's a bunch of roots still sticking out of it. There must have been four inches or more of these roots. Um, we took out yards of roots just from around this tree, like probably two and a half yards of roots from around a single tree. So it's something that we need to do, you know, for instance, for irrigation to come through or for us to put plants in here eventually is very extensive. Um, something we can do, but it's something that needs to be accounted for because it can be uh, quite a fight. Being that this was a pretty natural landscape, we're adding a lot of pine straw, um, sort of keep the natural look, but also being that it's very shady on this side of the property, it needs some sort of ground cover that's not grass. Um, Sometimes it's a budgetary concern, but sometimes we're just waiting on like phase two, phase three, something like that. Just buy us some time um, and sort of buy some space cheaply. Just uh, cover it over with some ground cover and maintain it without plants. And one of the things we, we do, but we try to hide, is we make straight lines. So we put our plants in a grid pattern and stuff like that. We put our bed lines parallel with things and straight. But out here we've done a more organic design with this flowing bed line. It skips through the fence, connects the two beds, the front and the side bed, and connects the sod line through the backyard. Just this very organic sort of flowing landscape, my preference personally. Big tear out, but we put this petite landscape in like we always do. Very ornate, very petite. Um, just the smallest changes, you know, we try to execute exactly to plan. Uh, unless there's some sort of major problem under the ground or above the ground, like if these junipers are too close to the house to stand up tall and, and free from the house, then bump them out a little bit and adjust the rest of the bed to fit that. But that's small stuff, you know? We try to execute exactly the way your plan is so that you get what you're expecting. 